Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2015 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Corn was growing a bunch this week in Ford Dodge. And now it's time to grow another champion. It's the Iowa Farm Bureau, Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Softball Championships on Buna Vista University Field in Fort Dodge. It's number seven, Logan Magnolia, the Panthers against the Cougars from AGWSR. They're fifth best in the state here at Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge. Hello everybody, Paul Yeager alongside Lauren Leonard on the fifth game of our coverage here today. And this one is a great one on a good way to end this day of coverage. Oh, we've had some great games already and this is a great nightcap. I think this one, it's gonna be all about those pitchers. These two pitchers in this ball game have been playing and throwing very well. And they are led. Uh, let's start first with Logan Magnolia and Megan Wilson. Yeah, Megan Wilson is their second baseman. She's just a freshman and on the season hitting over 400, seven doubles and six triples on the season. But she also has 34 stolen bases. She's very quick and can get down the line in the tournament over three, but she's been on base a lot, three walks, and she scored four runs. It's a young squad and it's also young on the mound and that's Abby Strait. Abby Strait really has been dominant here in this tournament. Her go-to pitch is a rise ball and she does such a great job with that. She's only only allowed two runs in six postseason games, 14 strikeouts in the semifinal game. That was one short of a tournament record, puts him into the championship game. Logan Magnolia last year in 2006, AGWSR third straight year. They've been third twice. They are guaranteed better than that, and they want a championship. Jamie Johnson behind the plate. Really does a nice job of handling the game, managing the pitcher, Ashley Seichard, does a great job. They've worked together since the eighth grade, and she's pretty potent at the plate herself in the tournament here it is two of eight and they, she needs to continue to keep going at the plate knocking in runs and Ashley Seichard she does it great from the bat but she's not too bad of a pitcher she had a no hitter to get into the final 1,000 strikeouts she's on fire she really is on fire and adding to that pitching performance two home runs four RBIs got her thousandth career strikeout in that semifinal game as they celebrate to get to the title game Without further ado, let's go to Randy Krejci to find out tonight's starters. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge on the 2015 Iowa Girls High School State Softball Tournament. Our final game today is a Class 1A championship featuring the Cougars from AGWSR and the Panthers from Logan Magnolia. Introducing the non-starters for AGWSR, Mandy Willems, Haley Baker, Abby Robinson, Carrington Hunt, Miranda Jimerson, Mariah Jimerson, Taryn Barrick, Taylor Sycard, Christy Massino, Bailey Cruzon. Introducing the non-starters for Logan Magnolia, Aaron Peschel, Alexis Christians, Alex Shook, Katie Diggins, 
Shelby Larry. Shelby Buffum. Abby Godden. Assistant coaches, Blair Coolman, Taylor Cool, Stephanie Martindale. Introducing the starting lineup for AGWSR, leading off in right field, Alana Groninga. Batting second at third base, Maddie Dieters. Batting third, pitcher Ashley Seichard. Batting fourth, designated player Megan Marlette. Batting fifth at catcher, Jamie Johnson. Batting sixth, the shortstop, Morgan Kappel. Batting seventh at first base, Jody Johnson. Batting eighth in center field, Anna Jaspers. Batting ninth in left field, Addie Johnson. Playing second base, Abby Young. Head coaches for AGWSR, Scott O'Brien and Brenda Drake. Introducing the starting lineup for Logan Magnolia, leading off at shortstop, Kylan Strait. Batting second at second base, Megan Wilson. Batting third, pitcher, Abby Strait. Batting fourth in left field, Jenna Peschel. Batting fifth at third base, Steffi Kennard. Batting sixth, designated player, Joanna Healy. Batting seventh at first base, Abby Carlson. Batting eighth in right field, Bergen Johnson. Batting ninth in center field, Kenzie Kennard. And catching, Danny Gokenauer. Head coach for Logan Magnolia, Trent Cool. Introducing the umpire staff for this class 1A championship game. At first base, Paul Bird. At third base, Paul Tom Berger. And behind the plate, Joe Havenhill. Ladies and gentlemen, players and coaches, it's time for state championship softball. All right, let's take a look at the defense and how they're going to play. As you see, Logan Magnolia, they are the home team, and this is how they will line up tonight. It's Abby straight on the mound, Danny Gokenauer behind the plate. On the infield, first base, Abby Carlson. Second, Megan Wilson. The shortstop is Kylan Strait, and at third base is Steffi Kennard. From left to right in the outfield, it's Jenna Peschel, Kenzie Kennard, and Bergen Johnson in right. Peschel, Kennard, and Johnson left to right for Logan Magnolia. And the pitcher for Logan Magnolia for the Panthers, is Abby Strait, and she is one that we talked about in the open, Laura. She's got a good arsenal. She's got a good stat as well. 25-3 and three through 173 innings, and her opponents are batting 142 against her. And look at the walks to strikeout ratio. She is a definite strikeout pitcher, and we talked about it. That go-to pitch and that go-to out pitch is that rise ball. And that is how she will try to get out this uh, order of AGWSR in their third straight State Tournament, and this is the lineup as they try to win a championship. Alana Granaga, Maddie Dieters, Ashley Seichard is batting third. The designated player is Megan Marlette, Jamie Johnson, Morgan Kappel, Jody Johnson, Anna Jaspers, and the left fielder is Eddie Johnson. Granaga will lead off for AGWSR, and we take a look at straight in the middle. This is our last game. The sun is golden. The skies were threatening early, but you can see some blue sky there from our behind home plate cam. The shadows are going to uh, almost cover the field. We should have it in a couple of innings, and we're ready to go. The first ball. pitch is low for a ball to Alana Groninga. Straight looks in, winds and fires ball. upstairs, 2-0. I think, I'm sorry, I think you're going to see a, a Cougars lineup that's going to be very patient, try to stay off that high ball, and try to make her get it down in the zone. Logan Magnolia is 35-3 on the season as the first uh, strike comes in. And AGWSR comes in with a record of 28-8. and eight. Ball is chopped in the middle. Fielded, but too late. And a hustling. Groniga is at first base. 
That, what a hit. That ball was not going to move and go foul. It just sat in the dirt and spun. Good effort by Strait. She slips as she fields the ball and almost still makes the play over at first. Second batter is Maddie Dieters, the senior. Misses on getting that bunt down. She's batting 530 on the season. Both of these teams can swing the bat. Both of these teams can also put zeros on you when they're pitching. Next pitch is high and bunted and it's down. And the sacrifice goes from first to the second baseman. So 3-4, Dieters is retired and that'll bring up Ashley Seikart who last game, she's thrown seven no hitters in her career. Five just this year. She threw a no hitter on Thursday, and that wasn't even the most exciting thing for her. <laughs> the pitch. Ball. Yeah, she gave you the in. order. What was the order? She's, that, that, order she's, of importance for Order her. of importance were the two in. home runs, which is why I bring it up now, because she's batting. Second was the 1,000 strikeout. Third was getting into the title game, and fourth was the no-hitter. She looks at one upstairs, and it's 2 and up on Ashley Seikhardt. Well, she certainly got good looks yesterday, and there was no doubt about those balls that left the yard. As soon as she made contact with them, you knew they were gone. The 2-0 is in there for a called strike. Yeah, she gets, she's a big girl, good swing, gets those arms extended, and it could just go. She'll play at DMAC next year. She hits it high in the air, deep to left, back, up, and gone! On cue, Ashley Seikhardt gives the Cougars a 2-0 lead. Touch them all, Ashley. Well, just like that, as you were talking about it, and the importance to her in the game yesterday were the two home runs. She caught up to one of those rise balls and lifted it out into left center field. Never a doubt about that one. Got the extension, and you can see the expression of Abby Strait as she looks up in the air, knows she made a mistake. Now they pitch to her. You got to give them credit. Some teams would walk her, but they, you know, I don't, we haven't seen an intentional walk in any of the championship games that we've done today, Laura. You've, there's been a couple this week. But I like to take see him time, pitching time, and challenging them. Yeah, ball. and you know, I'll tell you what, they had first base open. Give her a second. So you could have easily, easily walked her. And great move here by home plate umpire Joe Haverhill to Good. give Gokenauer okay. a little bit of time because that foul ball came right off of her face mask and allowing her to shake the cobwebs out. Two strikes. Marlette, the designated player, the 0-2, ball is low. So now what can Marlette do? You're trying to put crooked numbers on the board if you're up, at least score a run. They've got two so far, can they get three? The pitch. Ball. And you just want to keep the inning going now. You're not looking to drive the ball out of the ballpark. You just want to start stringing some hits together, see if you can put a big inning together. Now we saw that in the 5A game. That's exactly what Waukee did. Jumped on Johnston early, early, and kind of threw their punch. And I think it, uh, it staggered Johnston. Five in that top of the first and went on to win six to four. The winning run was at the plate. Haley Towers popped out to end it. Ball three is dribbled into the plate, trying to see how aggressive Marlette is, and she keeps her patience and keeps her poise. Full count now, battling back. Popped up on the infield towards right. There is Megan Wilson. She squeezes, grabs, and there's an out. We're well, going to see a lot of pop-ups and a lot of fly balls, especially since Abby Strait likes to go with that uh, rise ball. So you're going to see a lot of fly ball outs for this defense. Jamie Johnson, the catcher, bats with two outs here in the AGWSR half of the inning. Ackley, Geneva, Wellsburg, Steamboat Rock, as you see Johnson's numbers, 281 batting average on the season. Liner towards short. Gets 
underneath the glove, still recovering to make the throw. As Kylan Strait bails out her sister, Carlson helped as well. And the Cougars are retired in the first, but now before they score two on a home run by Ashley Sycard. And now the Cougars will go to work on this defense. They'll bring out Sycard, they'll send out Sycard to the mound. And Jamie Johnson is your catcher and she'll go behind the plate. At first base is Jody Johnson. At second, Abby Young. Morgan Keppel is at short. Maddie Dieter is at third. Addie Johnson in left, Anna Jaspers in center. And Alana Groniga is in right. And we talk about Sycard. Pretty good with the bat, She's not too bad as a pitcher either. No, she really isn't. And we saw a pretty good performance yesterday with her picking up that thousandth strikeout in her career and uh, a fitting end to the game where she was able to get that last strikeout and that was number 1,000. ERA of .81. Opponents are batting 153 against her. She's 28 and six on the season, more than 200 innings pitched. And here are your batters for Logan Magnolia, Kylan Strait, Megan Wilson, Abby Strait, Jenna Peschel, the sophomore in left, is batting cleanup. Steffi Kennard, Joanna Healy, Abby Carlson, Bergen Johnson, and Kenzie Kennard finishes out the order for the Panthers. As you can see, we talk about the shade. Now the whole infield is pretty much in the shade now, and Logan Magnolia's got to do a couple of things to win tonight. Well, they need to trust their defense, and uh, you know they've got a good defense behind their pitcher just didn't have an opportunity to really show it in that last inning. And they just need to play hard and have fun. And that's what Coach Cool uh, said, is just go ahead and play hard, have fun, enjoy the moment. Sycard winds and deals into the screen behind. That's a ball. Logan Magnolia comes to bat. They are out of Western Iowa. North and west of Missouri Valley, Ball. which is north and west of Council Bluffs. Beautiful area there in the Lus Hills. AGWSR from northeast Iowa, west of Waterloo, northeast of Ames. Fort Dodge is a good meeting spot for these two teams. If you're gonna pick a spot to play a regular season game, this would be the spot. Pretty centrally located for both teams to, to meet up. This is the regular home diamond of the Fort Dodge High School Dodgers. And the other diamond that's used for state tournament championship action is the home field of Fort Dodge St. Edmonds. The Gales, both teams at state this week. As the count goes full, and Kylan Strait, the shortstop and the freshman, looks for the pitch from the senior. Chopped up, back to the third, baseman. Picking up and throwing it into right field is Maddie Peterson, and Strait, who's pretty quick of, on the feet, is now standing at second. Very similar to the way the game started for AGWSR, that little pound the ball into the ground in front of the plate, see what happens. And the throw across the diamond from Dieters into the dirt, and Johnson could not corral that. You're gonna rule that a hit and an error to put straight at second. And Megan Wilson, another freshman, swings and fouls and puts it into the fence in front of the dugout of Logan Magnolia. The Panthers in their second trip to state. They came in 2006 and got fifth. This year, they're in the championship game. Sycard deals upstairs. Can't lay off that high pitch. We saw that earlier today. That one in the eyes, you just can't say no. And that's that situation where you let that hitter have one swing at it and then you sacrifice to try to move that runner to third. They would like to get this run in and cut this lead in half. They would like Time. to get the answer to the runs that were scored in the top half of the first. So any way you can move that runner around, you want to do it. Trent Cool. Doesn't change the sign. So Wilson probably swinging away here. Swings and misses and strikes out. Sycard's first strikeout of the ball game. 
That's why it's so important to really turn and concentrate and get that sacrifice down. Turn and give it up. Here's a look at that strikeout. Paints the outside corner and with a little bit of heat to it. Sidecar deals with the runner at second. Chop towards right. And the second baseman picks it up. Abby Young. And records the out. Runner moves over to third. That's Kylan Strait. Abby Strait moves her sister. So it'll be up to Peschel to keep the inning going. Well, got the ball to the right side of the field to move that runner along. And you have ball to believe that the sacrifice would have gotten down. That ball hit to the right side would have played it a run because she probably would have been going on contact. That's how important sacrificing is. The 1-0. Swung on and missed by Peschel, the sophomore. So five freshmen in this starting lineup. Two seniors, a sophomore and a junior for Coach Cool. The sophomore pulls it foul. And it'll be one and two. Well, they say that uh, Ashley Seichard throws oh, about 60 to 62 miles an hour. So you are gonna have to be prepared and be on your toes and then be ready for an off-speed pitch because she brings it most of the time, but there's that off-speed. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> and that records the second out. It's like you've done this before, Laura. It's my first time. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right, Mark Amadeo is the third member of our broadcast crew. He's been out in the sun all day, and let's bring him into the broadcast now, Mark. Oh, thank you, Paul and Laura, and I have Neil O'Conis, the former retired superintendent for Ackley Geneva, Wellsburg, Steamboat Rock. Which two cities were you in charge of then? Pardon? Which two cities were you in charge of? Well, at, I started out with Wellsburg and Steamboat Rock. Okay. That was my first assignment. And then we began negotiating the various types of contracts between Ackley and Geneva to get the two districts together. Well, what a week it's been for them, and now they're playing for a title game. Up 2 nothing here, Coach. Absolutely a wonderful <laughs> ex exhibition of athletic ability by the girls and so forth. And I'd just like to say that they've done an outstanding job throughout the year. Now, what about the fans? You sit up there with the fans, and these are your former people that, that you used to, you know, kind of manage. Well, our fans are very faithful, as evidenced by the number of them that turn out in each of the variety of, of uh, athletic events that we have in our system. Uh, we've been very lucky to be successful. We've been successful in all phases, not only softball, but the other type of sports as well. Neil, thank you. You're very welcome. Paul and Laura? All right, the first pitch is in there for a ball. Thank you, Mark. Second one is in there for a strike to Morgan Keppel, the senior shortstop. Now, we talk about the youth of Logan Magnolia. This is an experienced bunch for AGWSR. And that one's in there for a strike. Yeah, you look up and down this lineup for AGWSR and You've got several seniors that they're going to graduate, and so if they're going to make a run at this title, this is probably going to be the year because they're going to have to reload next year. Six seniors that are starters. And the biggest one is the one that uh, has made it 2 nothing. And Ashley Seichard. This team was third in 2013, Ball. third in 2014. So getting to that championship game was big for them. Well, I think when they won yesterday, I think it was just they all breathed a sigh of relief. They finally got over the hump and able to get here to, to play on championship Friday. And Logan Magnolia felt, well, both teams felt there's no big dog in the tournament. Akron Westfield is sitting at home watching this year, the number one team and defending champion. Three balls, two strikes. River Valley knocked them off to get to state, and River Valley went down to Logan Magnolia yesterday as this one has popped up and in behind. Not in the bleachers, but close. New set of bleachers here from behind at Fort Dodge here at Harlan Rogers Complex as Abby Strait gets ready to deliver her eighth pitch of this at bat, and it's down low to Keppel. He's on base with a walk. 
You know, but going back to talking about no big dog in the tournament, that uh, some of the higher ranked teams were knocked off and didn't make their way to Fort Dodge. That's the beauty of this softball tournament. When regionals start, everybody has a shot at making a run and making a run up to Fort Dodge. Ball gets away from the catcher, Gokenauer, and down to second is gonna be Morgan Keppel. As Jody Johnson now will be ahead in the count one ball and no strikes. And you can and, and really, Laura, there's I not, there weren't any top teams in any of the classes uh, of number one. Just a couple of classes had number one even in the tournament, let alone in the final. Yeah, you, you looked at the final rankings and then you looked at the pairings and, and then when you got down to the final four in each class, you, you really didn't see a lot of the top rated teams. And that tells you how equal a lot of these schools are in all the different classes. Johnson gets the bunt down in front of the pitcher who makes the play to first and it moves over Capel to third. So now, Vanna Jaspers can lift it in the air or get it to the right side. She's got a chance to increase this Cougar lead two to nothing. Top of the second. Shows butt, pops it up. Safety squeeze is on and they're gonna have a rundown down at third. She's got to throw it, otherwise she's not going to get it. She slid under the tag. Kappel got under the Gokenauer tag. I think that's one of those no, 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 go, go, go moments. Right. As we'll see it again here to see how that one unfolded. Well, straight played it perfectly. She came in, didn't even look okay. at third, fake like she's going to throw, comes trainer. right back, and you run right at him. You want to run him back to the base, though, rather than run them forward. You want to run them back to the base. And that was the only mistake right there. What a great slide around the tag by Kappel. And a good look at it there from our high home camera that was able to show you how she did slide right under the tag as we do have a medical timeout for the catcher, Gokenauer, as she goes into the trainer. The first pitch, if, if it doesn't work, then you look for the oh, it was a great, a, a great play all the way around on both sides, really. The only thing was the execution is not running him back to third base. Kappel back to third base, allowing her to just head straight for home, and they could not make the play and get the tag down. Kokenauer visits the cage, comes back, and she's ready to go behind the plate. One out on the fielder's choice, but 3 nothing on the scoreboard. For the number nine hitter in the lineup, Addie Johnson. Well, you know, AGWSR has co-head coaches, and so they split duties at third base. So yesterday, Brenda Drake was coaching over there at third base, and today Scott O'Brien has the, the call over there at third. So uh, interesting, I, you, you wonder, well, you know, would that same been the same call if Brenda Drake were over there? One ball, one or strike. do they converse about this? Do they have signals back and forth about how they're gonna manage a ball game. Lifted high into left towards Jenna Peschel. And Peschel puts it away for the second out of the inning. You do, you wonder how they would discuss that. And uh, this season, Scott O'Brien got his 300th career win and Brenda Drake got her career 100th win. And that ball is in the dirt. Great stop by Gokenauer behind the plate on Alana Gronica. As you see, Anna Jasper still at first with two outs. And the pitch, low. Now I think Strait is maybe having a little trouble with moisture on her hands. She, she keeps rubbing her hand on her pants and is reaching back. She's got a little towel back there, but I think you can see her really working trying to get the moisture off. And, I don't know if they have a rosin bag in the dugout, but she might need a little help in that regard. Oh, oh. That one was just up on the top side of the zone. Yeah, if you try to grab your hands, I mean, I'm not playing, but they do feel a bit, a bit sticky, and so if you are moving around like they are, you know your pants only have so much dry area before they're not gonna be able to dry your hand off. And right. she does have a towel on her right side. There you see she's grabbing for it. Well, it's just, it's just hard in, in the humidity like this to try oh. to keep things dry. 
They throw into at second to try to get Jaspers, and it goes into center field. There wasn't much communication. It was. Well, it was a walk. It was ball four. Cut time. And you can see ball four right there didn't need to make that throw because she was going to be at second base anyway. Knowing the situation is key. Because right now you don't really care about that runner at third. You just need to get that out at first. Or if it's closer, take the out at second. Ball. Delayed throw. They're going to go into the rundown. I think they're just going to concede that runner to second. And they'll let... Gronica, so now it takes the force out. Jasper's to third. Gronica at second. Maddie Dieter's at the plate. She's ahead in the count, 1-0. and oh. Dieter's the big batter in this inning because if you allow her to get on right behind her, Ashley Seichard. That one gets away. Underneath the tag, not even getting the tag down, is straight. And scoring is Anna That's Jasper's. Up. And that's going to warrant a walk to the mound for Trent Cool as we see how this play unfolds. There's no chance for Gokenauer. Right, and that, that rise ball is just sailing right now on straight, and I do think it has something to do with her grip and, and trying to keep her hand dry. Yeah, we know how to play, all right? You having trouble staying dry? Yeah. How big is yours? Not very big, but it's It's wet. bigger than that one. I hope you You got a rosin bag? No. Okay. I have one in my bag. All right. Just stick that in your back pocket. All right? Let's go. You good? Yep. You guys, anybody needs extra time, let me know. Okay, it's hot out here, okay? All right, here we go. So, Laura, you nailed it. The problem with the perspiration, she said her whole forearm was wet. Yeah, it's just got to be rolling down her, her forearm into her hand, and she just... Uh, she can't seem to get it dry. And then when you can't get your pitches to locate, then you start really thinking about it. Ball. And that's when it becomes a problem because then you overthrow or you try to do things too fine. And that's when you get yourself in trouble. Dieters works the count to three and out. Runner at third Hurt. is Gronica. And there's a strike from straight. And they exchanged towels. I'm not sure who did give up the towel there in the center circle. They did ask for a rosin bag. That's another good pitch. So drying off the hand has made a difference. And if you get a couple of good pitches, it can build some confidence. Absolutely. And, and let her know that she can get those pitches in there, and then she can get a good grip. Ground ball back to straight. Underhand toss to first to Carlson. And the threat ends, but not before AGWSR gets two more. There's a whole bunch of scoring in this contest, and let's take a look at it right now to show you. First, in the first, it was a home run from Ashley Seichard. She goes deep to left center, beyond the bleachers there. It was 2-0 at that point. Then in the second, started with a walk. Then it was this play where there was a uh, runner at third. Going home to score is going to be Anna Jaspers. She got under the tag, and then a pass ball. Well, Campbell scored first. Now this is Jasper scoring. And that's how the Cougars have been able to get four runs. There you look at that uh, outside center field cam. You can see that high press box there. And new set of bleachers in, in between the bleachers to the left and to the right. And this is how these teams got here. New London knocked off Newell Fonda in the contest to start. Uh, this bracket back on Monday. That was a 9-1 win. Don Bosco couldn't do much against Logan Magnolia. That was a 10-0 win for Logan. Then AGWSR came back and beat Marquette Catholic. They were down 3-0 going into the seventh inning. And then River Valley got by Linville Sully. Then AGWSR knocked off River Valley to get here 9-1. And then Logan Magnolia over New London 4-1. Now you go back to AGWSR in that game against Marquette Catholic from Bellevue, Laura. This is a ball game. AGWSR is down 3 0 going into the seventh. They get six runs, and so they're leading 6 to 3. But then Marquette scores two runs, has the winning run at the plate. Couldn't get her home. 
and the game ended in AGWSR. Oh. Survived, and Marquette Catholic was out without their pitcher, their main pitcher, their ace. She had to report to the Naval Academy on Saturday. And I don't think you can tell the Naval Academy, hey, I gotta play in a softball tournament. I think they're- I just want five days. <laughs> just give me five day pass. Can you give me a five day leave even before I enroll? Well, good for her. I mean, to, to go and represent and uh, go to the Naval Academy, it'll be a great experience for her. But AGWSR moves on and they're playing for a state title and leading four nothing. Ground ball to short. The out is made as Kylan Strait throws across to Abby Carlson. Kennard is retired, and that brings in Joanna Healy, the senior designated player wearing number seven. There's a look at it. You can see that sun kind of, for those fans sitting on the right side, you can see a lot of those Logan Magnolia fans are putting their hands above their head to kind of shield that sun, and it's going to be down fairly soon. And like wrong, not so okay, much anymore, but earlier on in this ball game, I think that was probably an issue for the first baseman. Uh, as that ball would come from the left side, have to make sure that they were getting a good look and zeroing in on the throw from the left side of the field. Well, and you can see how the shadow is even different there. You can see the sun on the left side of your screen, and there they are looking straight in the sun, a lot of sunglasses. Now, the first baseman is now in the shade, but the first base umpire is in the sun. Paul Two Bird seconds. down there, down the line. So that's the hard thing. It's a beautiful time of day to play and a little cooler but yes, those shadows, but these players are used to playing in that. They play in this, this time of day all year. Right, this is usually uh, game time for them around seven o'clock, and so they're used to this, and whether it's cool at night or really hot and humid like it is tonight, they're used to it. They've played 40 games in, in this kind of weather. That's Iowa softball weather for you. I think, would you rather play that or that uh, spring ball where you're playing in March and April and May? I'm gonna tell you what, I've played both. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I remember playing in a ball game in the spring when I was playing at Drake. It was so cold that by the end of the game, you could not feel your feet. It was that cold, but we had to play. You had to get the games in, and I think that's the way it would be here if we had to play spring softball. And you were the ones running around. Imagine for yeah. those that weren't. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't have many fans that came to those games. <laughs> Not to those games, they <laughs> Not wouldn't. Not to those games. Abby Carlson, the freshman first baseman, digs in. She's in the hole, nothing and one. The side card ball, pitch is up. high, and it evens the count at a ball and a strike. Logan Magnolia out of the Western Iowa Conference. They were first conference champions this year. Foul ball into the dugout, Fitz. Trent Cool in his sixth year as head coach. The last time Logan Magnolia ball, was here back. was back in 2006 when they got fifth. He was a dad that year as the second baseman and catcher were his daughters as Sykar delivers upstairs. Ball. And now he's with those daughters again. All three daughters are his assistants. Steph, who played at San Diego or at South Dakota State, then a coach at Northwestern. Blair played four years at Wayne State. Swing and a miss, strike three for Logan Manolia and Taylor is a teacher. So, good to have a family affair, but he's got to send the girls back out onto the diamond. And Abby Strait, as she comes back out to take the mound and maybe get some of that sweat off her hand, look at her in slow motion. You can see the push off and the good extension and the good flip of the wrist to get that spin on that rise ball. And you could see the spin right there from the hitter's angle. So now her fingers, you could see how quickly her fingers pulled in. What is it she's trying to do when she's doing that right at the end? Is that just an extra little English on it? You know, and again, not being a pitcher, but I, I think what that does is you try to, you get that spin going down and that's a drop ball. I think a lot of times when you get that reverse rotation as it comes in and that spin is going downward. So she is a rise ball pitcher and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are watching this ball game going, no, you're wrong on that. But that is a way to be able to move the ball and, and show different spins to get the ball to move up or down. Nice look at that uh, view today. Sycard looks in and they're pitching to her again as she looks at the first pitch inside for a ball. Sycard, as we mentioned, going to DMAC. 
Wants to be an elementary education major, maybe ag business. She is a girl from the farm. Her mother was a multi-sport athlete at Applington High School, went on to play volleyball at Waldorf in Forest City. The 1-0 is in there for a strike. Well, she certainly has a bright future in front of her. And I think, you know, going to DMAC and playing a year or two there, she is probably going to get some looks as she drills two another one. She knocks it to left, but just not enough muscle this time. She's retired on a fly ball. So, yeah, her coach, uh, her college coach is here. Saw coach Ligori is here. Yep, saw Coach, coach Ligori here before the game. I said, you got an eye for talent again. He goes, how can you miss that one, you know? <laughs> but you wonder, um, you know, th that's, that's the hard thing about a, a player coming from a smaller school than a larger school. It's, you can dominate, but you just, you think Ashley looks like she's gonna be able to play at the next level. Right. And be successful. Oh, I absolutely think so. And, and probably a year or two of extra seasoning, so to speak, at DMAC and with a coach like Coach Ligori, I think she will definitely get some calls from some bigger schools after that first or second year. Pop up behind second. Looks like it's going to drop. And it will for Megan Marlette. And there's a runner on with one out. Here in the third. Top of the third. 4 nothing is our score. AGWSR and Logan Magnolia. You know, it seems like we've seen throughout the day today a lot of hits like that that just are getting over the infield. They're just dropping in front of the outfielders. And I don't know why that is, but it just seems like we've had a lot of the so-called Texas Ball leaguers, in. the bloop hits that have just fallen in. The duck snort. <laughs> CNI single. Well, I really, that's more of a ground ball. <laughs> a ground ball with highs. You know, we'll, maybe we'll use that for a ground ball later. <laughs> Sorry, channel and Crash Davis there just a little bit. Maybe if we get the, the really high pop-up, we'll call it a can of corn. <laughs> <laughs> We've laid off the cliche since the first game, so maybe we'll bring it here in the second game. The 1-1. One, one. Lifted high in the air, deep to left, up, up, and away! Home run, Jamie Johnson! Two more! Cougars are going to score! Well, we talked about Jamie Johnson in the opening and what a good job she does behind the plate managing the game. I'm gonna tell you what, she managed that pitch right out of the ballpark and adds another two to their total. Boy, <laughs> no win to help that one, but she didn't need it. Look at this one. Down low and in the zone, the bat flip after. She knew it as soon as it left. And I think you could see the that one body, body language, everybody else in the infield knew it. That one may have gone farther than side cards. It might have. So now it'll be up to Morgan Campbell. She bats with one out here in the third. The pitch from straight, ground ball. Fielded by Kylan straight, but it just kind of eats her up. And that'll be the second error of the game for the Panthers. And this is a team that works the 21 out drill where the coach hits it into play. And they gotta get 21 outs before an error. And if they have an error, they gotta go all the way back to the beginning and start over. Right, and a great drill because it really makes you concentrate on playing defense and fielding ground balls and catching fly ball outs. But right now struggling in the field a little bit, the balls are in the dirt from straight Kokenauer are having a little bit of trouble keeping him in front. That allows Capel to move up to second base. So I don't see a rosin bag out there for straight, but she is still trying to get that hand dry. Ball out. And I thought I heard in that huddle that somebody said they had a rosin bag. So I, yeah, I don't see one out unless she just tried to dry off and use that in the dugout. Six nothing, AGWSR in control of this one now here in the third. The pitch. Ball down. So now, straight has gone 3-0 on Jody Johnson. 
Her sister just had the home run. And that one's low, and now she's going to be on base. Two on, one out here still in the third. This is not the way Logan Magnolia had it drawn up. Well, it's never the way you have it drawn up when you get down six to nothing. You come into these ball games with the confidence and the air about you that you're going to win this game. And they have just run into a buzzsaw right here, right from the beginning with the home run from Ashley Sykard to start the ball game to give them that two run lead and then they get two more in the second and now have two more here in the third and are threatening for more. A lot of these girls will wear bows in their hair and I'm trying to get a look at exactly what's written on Ashley or Anna Jasper's bow. On the right side it says no fear or over fear. Two balls, one strike. Little messages here and there that they have, inspirational messages to kind of... You know, every, every team has some little things that they do, a team unity, team bonding type of thing. We saw a game earlier where the, the team, and I, we've had so many games, I can't remember now, who had the buckets that uh, they painted and they, they sat on Ball, those buckets in the four. dugout and that uh, was their team bonding and their what they did to get everybody to get together. On Anna's bow, it says faith over fear. That's what was on the left. And Cascade's the team that had the buckets. Thank you. And Logan Magnolia is a team that likes to dance. <laughs> they, do, they did music videos on Wednesday to kind of keep loose. That's right, they said they had a little dance off. Ground ball up the middle. That's gonna plate one, maybe two. Well, nope, they're gonna hold. Coach O'Brien is going to hold Johnson at third. Kappel's going to score on the hit up the middle by Annie Johnson. Another RBI, another base hit, and another run for AGWSR. It's now seven to nothing. Right up the middle there. That ground ball didn't need eyes. It was on a line. That was right back up the middle, and there's a big gap ball in the ball. middle of the diamond as Wilson kind of shades over to the right side a little bit more, doesn't crunch it into the middle, likes to favor and, and shoot over up. to the right side. So there is a big gap right around second base. Straight ball. delivers, ball gets away from Gokenauer there. She chases it down as it squirts Good. away. Base is loaded. Here in the third. The 2-0, in there for a strike. In this situation, you'd be patient at the plate because you have the bases loaded. You want to make that pitcher work. Make or throw you strikes. Popped up, right side, not a play. Nice crowd still on hand here for this one. In softball, the smaller schools draw very well. No, they really do. It's a... Uh, Two it's ball, a community pride that you want to go and support your school, and uh, I think that's why we get the big crowds for the 1A, 2As, and 3As. Ball gets away from Gokenauer. Johnson's going to stay at third. But that'll load the count to three and two. It's been a good week of attendance here. State softball's been in Fort Dodge since 1970, and this week, yesterday actually, the 800,000th fan Pass through the turnstiles here. Another one in the dirt, and that's ball four for Groninga. A good patient at bat for Groninga. Just waited out Abby straight until she was able to get the walk, and we've just seen her struggle all game long with that perspiration. And that's the fourth run for AGWSR. Two. As we have a huddle at more of a perspiration time out there. It's still 87 degrees. The humidity is still high here. You can do that. Hey, relax, relax. have fun. Eight to nothing. There's nothing to be pre no pressure now. Have fun. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, they're gonna throw you outside. And I'm gonna Okay, but you need to be ready because 
They got that 2-0 count, then they threw it outside, then they threw it another eight inches outside after that, all right? All right, here we go. Coaches don't need paper charts. They have good memories. Yeah. They know <laughs> what was done. Coach, Coach Scott O'Brien there saying lay off that one on the outside. The first one's in the dirt to Maddie Dieters. And where this is the uh, ninth batter to come to bat for AGWSR and there's only one out. The 1-0. Ground ball towards short. Tossed over to third to get one out. The run does score. That's Anna Jaspers. Well, the infield was playing in. We're going to try to make the play at the plate and cut down that runner to stop them from scoring another run, but they opted to get an out, and that was the right play. It was the closest play to be able to get an out and try to get out of this inning. Brings in Ashley Seichard. One for two today, a home run and two RBIs. Three more are sitting out there. Ball. You do have a base open, but they're still gonna go after Sycard. She started this inning with a fly ball to left. What can she do now? Swings on through it. Now they're gonna challenge her and you gotta give them credit for that because they saw what she did in the first inning and you're right, they do have that base open, but they're coming right after her. The 2-1, ball low and outside. And it might be the unintentional, intentional walk. They are staying away from her <laughs> low and on the outside corner. And you heard coach tell her that they're gonna stay away from her when she got up there. The 3-1, ball down. Ooh, a little bit low. Two home runs yesterday, one today. Two courtesy. We're now gonna have a courtesy runner for Sycard. She actually needs one now, because she's actually on base. Before the home run, two, she courtesy. doesn't need a courtesy. Number two, courtesy so the bases are loaded again. So the runner is Mandy Willems. Mandy Willems, right? Yep, number two. And batting is Megan Marlette. Ten First ball, one has bounced ball, in there. First base. It hit her. So Marlette is hit by pitch. So Granica will, oh, got her on the shoestring. Yeah. Brought up some dust. Just uh, bounced in front and just over the top and got her right on top of the shoe. Got time, got time. Umpiring with your ears. And uh, Coach Cool is gonna make his way out with a towel. They go and finally get the rosin right, bag out for her and uh, we're gonna bring it out, see if that can dry her hands off a little bit. You good? 10-0 is your score. Six runs have scored in this inning alone. And the bases are loaded for Jamie Johnson. Her first trip up this inning was a two-run homer. First pitch is low and gets away. Here comes. Maddie Dieters to score, and it's now 11 nothing. Marlette to second. And Willems to third. Now again, and you hate to belabor the point, but Strait is just having a hard time gripping the ball. Ground ball hit to third, it's gonna get through. One run will score. Willems will score, and Marlette will stay at third. You got time? 
Now there's a C9 single, I think. They got through the, <laughs> through the infield, pounded into the front of the home plate, and it scoots through. Courtesy of the catcher, number eight. So Jamie Johnson gets the hit, and then she'll allow Mariah Jimerson to be the courtesy runner as Megan Keppel, who scored every time she's been up this inning. Lifts it high in the air to left, but it's playable. In comes the left fielder, Jenna Peschel, to make the out. And the Cougars are finally retired in the inning. Huge seven run inning. All right, so we're at 12 nothing after three. So Mark Amadeo, what does that mean? That means we're at the run rules in high school uh, Federation softball. If the uh, home team is losing after by 12 runs after the third or fourth inning, uh, the game is over. Otherwise, it's 10 after five. That'd be the fifth inning. But Logan Mandelli would have a, uh, a bat here at the bottom of the third or at the bottom the of the fifth. They got to get two runs here or, or game's over. Well, they could just get one, right, or to, to play on until the fourth. Right. They, it's down 12. Now they got to get at least one run, correct? Yeah. Okay. So an eight run third. Thank you, Mark. As you look at that camera from in center field, they've been up on the lift all day. In the sun, they had breeze to start the day and some clouds and rain threatening to the east, but man, it is just a gorgeous night right now. Orange sky, little humid, 86 degrees. Here underneath the home plate, which is where we're seated. As you see Ashley Sykard take her warm up pitches. And I don't think, you know, no one wants to get into a championship game and go down 12 nothing. But right now, AGWSR is doing everything right. Logan Magnolia now trying to cut into this lead. It's not impossible. It's a big hill to climb. But AGWSR is three outs away from a state championship. And you have to have the mindset if you're Logan Magnolia, just get a run. You want to extend this game to give yourselves a chance and see if you can try to overcome this 12 run deficit. So you're thinking one run right now. Try to get yourself into a position where you can continue this game. Bergen Johnson swings and misses there and she's down on the count, nothing and two. Two Panthers haven't even batted yet. Johnson and Kennard. Johnson's up now. She looks at a pitch up and out of the zone. You know, he talked about uh, Sycard and Jamie Johnson working together their entire career since the eighth grade, and they kind of know each other very well inside and out, know what each other's thinking, and that's what you want in a battery. And that's what they're thinking right now is let's shut the door and get out of here with a win and a title. Sycard's pitch is fouled down the right side. Jamie Johnson's gonna head to Ellsworth and this is her final softball game. She's undecided on her major. But as you said, catcher for all five years, you do develop a kinship when you spend as much time together, five years on varsity. Sycard has thrown seven no-hitters in her career. And she strikes out Bergen Johnson here for her fifth strike out of the game. She threw a no-hitter to get into the final. She threw a no-hitter in the regional final. She threw, she's thrown five this season. Only two of them have been the full seven innings. She has given up a hit in this game. So she's dealing on a one-hitter. It's Kenzie Kennard looks at ball one. Well, you can just see how dominant she is. And wow, I'll tell you what, Kylan Strait over there is lucky <laughs> that she was paying attention because that was a rocket over there to the on-deck circle. But she's going to be impressive in college as well. I mean, she's been very impressive here throughout her high school career, but she's going to have the opportunity to do some big things, I think, in college. Getting to talk to Sycard the last couple of years here at the tournament. Uh, she's a fun girl. I asked her 
She didn't even know she was throwing a no-hitter yesterday as the ground ball is up to her. Over and out goes Kennard. And now there's two away and one away for a state championship for AGWSR. I say, are you gonna sleep much tonight? She says, no, the nerves, and I'm a night owl anyway. So, so now we're going to see if Kylan Strait can continue this game because we have the international rule here that if you're ahead 12-0 after three and each team gets to bat three times, or the, the team that's down gets to bat three times, this game will be over. So we're one out away in the third on this 12-0 lead for AGWSR. The pitch, off speed, up the middle, off the glove of Sycard, up and over, out! And that's it, a state championship for the first time in school history. The Cougars from AGWSR are state champions. Well, quite a dominant performance, a rocket right back up the middle. Sycard couldn't glove it, gets a piece of it though. And they're able to throw the runner out straight and they're celebrating with a big pile right in the center circle. 51 minute game and this is, I believe, am I reading this right, Chris? This is probably, this may have just set a record for shortest game for five class. I've seen the longest game in a extra inning game this week, and the record was one minute, or one hour and one minute, so this should be the shortest game. Yeah, the shortest game, a 12-run game, and a state championship for AGWSR. It doesn't matter any way you played it. The Cougars are state champs. And just dominating state champs here in this ball game. What a great performance, and their bats really spoke well for them here today. They came out with their hitting shoes on and set the tone early. And now we're gonna have the all-tournament team. And we're not used to having games end quickly. We normally have these long things. <laughs> I know. Laura, we're kind of looking at each other going on. There was a 40 minute game is what we're now being told by the union. So we might get a chance to talk to Coach Scott O'Brien. We never did get to do that, but they're gonna have the alternative team and let's, let's have that now. For the award ceremony, presenting the class 1A all tournament team medals is Mike Dick, executive director of the Girls Athletic Union. The 2015 state 1A all tournament team from AGWSR, Jody Johnson. From Logan Magnolia, Kylan Strait. From AGWSR, Maddie Dieters. From Logan Magnolia, Megan Wilson. From AGWSR, Morgan Kappel. From New London, Morgan Christner. From Linville Sully, Madison Rasmussen. From New London, Brianna Mettler. From River Valley, McKenna Thomas. From Logan Magnolia, Abby Strait. And at captain of the 2015 Class 1A All-Tournament team,
from AGWSR, Ashley Sycard. So on this, the 24th day of July, your state champion in class 1A, AGWSR for the first time in school history, the Cougars. Second in their conference, but it's good enough to be best in the state. There's a good look at your all-tournament team. Representatives from New London and Linville Sully, River Valley. Kenna Thomas there, we saw her come across. She had a good opening round game. And now for the trophy presentation. And now we're gonna uh, see the trophy presentation for these two teams. The player will receive a commemorative softball provided by Iowa Farm Bureau, title sponsor of the Girls Athletic Union. Presenting awards are members of the IGHS AU Board of Directors. Congratulations to the runner-up in Class 1A, head coach Trent Cool and the Logan Magnolia Panthers on an outstanding 2015 softball season. And your 2015 Class 1A State Softball Champions, head coaches, Scott O'Brien and Brenda Drake, and the Cougars from AGWSR. Third, no more. AGWSR, Ackley Geneva Wellsburg Steamboat Rock State Champions. Third the last two years, hoist the team trophy for first place this year, Laura. It looked like they let the seniors go out and take the trophy and then everybody else ran to them. A great celebration out there in the center of the diamond and a dominating performance by AGWSR. A couple of home runs, uh, one from Jamie Johnson and another from Ashley Sycard. We crown five champions today, AGWSR here in 1A. It was Iowa City Regina in 2A, Solon in 3A, Dallas Center Grimes in 4A, and Waukee in 5A. It's been a glorious day of softball here in Fort Dodge. From the entire crew of Iowa Public Television who's been working hard to bring this to you, they're going to be back for state volleyball. We're back with sports in November. See you then. Good night from Fort Dodge. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2015 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.